Hello, today I'm going to be using some new makeup in a partial get ready with me video while I answer 21 questions. Allie tagged me in her recent 21 questions makeup edition video and I've really enjoyed watching all of these and I'm just hoping that I can multitask efficiently and do my makeup while I answer these questions. So a big thank you to Allie for creating such a fun tag and for tagging me and we can go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be testing out these alter ego brushes and just using a bunch of newer and new to me things. I do already have my base products down because I kind of decided to do this in the middle of doing my foundation and powder and all that. I'll list everything I have on and everything I show down below in the description box. If you're on mobile, click the title below the video. If you're on desktop, look below that title and click the words show more and you can see everything that I use in the video. The first question is what is the oldest product in your makeup collection? I'm going to be using the new Tartlet Juicy palette and I'll put the shades that I'm using down below and I may pop them on the screen too. Now, if you had asked me this question about a week ago, my answer would be vastly different because we're packing up our house to get ready to sell it. So I actually purged a lot of makeup off camera. It was just too much to even put in a video. So it could have been a few things. I think it could have been my Tarte Exposed Blush or my Cargo Tonga Blush that I've had for, gosh, probably five or six years. But I feel like I've probably had products longer than that. What I'm gonna go with today, what's still in my collection, that's in this custom magnetic palette here, are these these three shadows from MAC, we have Amber Lights, Paradisco, and Rice Paper. These three shadows are really old and I should probably throw them out. I kind of forgot about this palette when I was cleaning everything out, but I probably shouldn't put those in near my eyes. They probably need to be purged. The next question is, what is your most recent purchase? It's not here yet, but my most recent purchase are the products from the new Auric collection from Samantha Ravindahl. So yeah, I'll have to pop these on the screen because they're just not here yet, but that is what I bought most recently. You know, you realize when you use different brushes, how much difference brushes really make. The next question is, what was the first makeup product you ever used? Now, I'm not counting kid makeup. I'm talking about, you know, when I was a teenager and could actually wear makeup. I wish I could remember the exact product. Now, keep in mind, this is not how I would normally apply product. I'm kind of having to improvise with the brush shapes that they have in here. I'm thinking that it had to be something from Prescriptives or Clinique because those brands were pretty big when I was in high school. I just can't think of the exact product. It might've been Clinique Black Honey or or I don't know, some kind of a lip product. That's what I'm thinking it had to have been. I've always had a thing for lip products and I was working part-time. I just feel like that's what I would have spent my hard earned money on is a, a pretty lip product. I wish I could remember specifically. The next question is what is a makeup trend that you used to love but you now hate? Hate is such a strong word, but I will say that I did used to wear liquid eyeliner quite often and I never wear it anymore because of the precision, the amount of time it takes, to apply it and my eye shape has just changed the older that I've gotten. I mean, I'm 45 now. I've got creases cutting through where the eyeliner goes and it just takes too long. I do so much better with pencil and shadow as liner. It's amazing how our tastes change as we age. The next question is what's a makeup trend that you used to hate but you now love? I'm going with highlighter for this one and specifically highlighter on the cheekbones. I just used to think it was kind of an unnecessary product even when I first started my channel. I didn't really use highlighter very much much and I now really really love it. I definitely see a place for it. I'll be using it in this video. I just think it can be so flattering when it's used properly. The next question is what is your favorite step in your makeup routine? I would have to say bronzer. This would work a lot better if I was actually applying bronzer right now but I'm just not that far ahead. So I feel like bronzer is just so transformative. I feel like my face isn't quite alive until I apply bronzer. I just feel like there's a dullness to it, kind of a flatness. Now I don't use it in lieu of contour to try and chisel out the face. I use it to give life to the face where the sun might normally hit, which you'll see here in a minute. But I also use it as a transition shade on my eyes and sometimes under my eyes to help, you know, make them look a little bit bigger. I just have, you know, this multi-purpose love thing with bronzer. What's a makeup product you can't live without? Now that would have to be concealer. I have dark circles under my eyes that have plagued me since I was in high school. Now that I think about it, maybe that was the first product I bought. I just know I've always been self-conscious of my hollows, the dark circles under my eyes. I look tired. I look like I'm sick. I mean, I've been told this before, so that's just 
my anatomy. It's the way I am and I need to have concealer or corrector or something to conceal the dark circles. I mean, nothing conceals the hollows, but I can conceal the darkness and I have to have my concealer. This was a really thought provoking question. What sparked your love for makeup? It was hard for me to pinpoint just one thing, but now that I think back, I kind of remember, you know, all the 90s supermodels, the really big, big supermodels. I remember getting fashion magazines and not being so much enthralled with the clothes, but I was just mesmerized at how their face could just transform so much with using different makeup. And so that's kind of what I would look at when I would get a Seventeen magazine or a Cosmopolitan or Vogue or whatever it would be. I would just always focus on the makeup looks. I think between that and having to figure out how to conceal my dark circles because I was self-conscious about them, I think the, the combination of that just kind of led me into loving makeup and wanting to know more about it. So those are what I think led me down this path. I mean, there could be some hidden thing that I'm completely forgetting about, but that's what comes to mind. The next question is, what's the worst makeup look you've ever done? Now, that's not here on YouTube. I don't even think I have a picture of it. I just know when I used to try and do a smoky eye, it would come out so heavy and not blended. And you know, I don't think that I am perfect with my makeup now by any means, but I feel like I have learned a lot about blending and you know what works for my face shape my eye shape and things like that over the years what I used to do then was not good so I think that I did that you know several times maybe just not one worse makeup look but I probably you know went a little too heavy multiple times and it was just not a good look the next question is what's your favorite makeup look you've ever done I'm pretty much all about everyday makeup looks I mean that's why a lot of you come here because it's stuff that you can attain and do every day and wear anywhere you want to go. So it's not like I have super over the top out there looks. Now I did a look, I don't know, last year, the year before, I can't remember, where I smudged things out a lot more than I normally do around my eyes and I had kind of peachy going on everywhere else. I want to say I used plum on the eyes. I feel like I was doing a look similar to a look that Melissa Alatore had done and I really like the way it came out. So I think that would probably be one of my favorites. You guys might disagree. I don't know. There were a couple that I was looking at but that's the one that kind of stood out to me. What's your favorite drugstore makeup product? This is not it. This is the bronzer that I'm using right now. Okay, I have to go to my own bronzer brush. Um, I don't like any of the bronzer brush options that they have in this set, so I'm just gonna use this Laura Mercier bronzer brush that I just love lately. I've been loving a lot of drugstore products, and I have a lot of drugstore staples that I go to, but in the end, I feel like I have to go with the Maybelline Fit Me foundation. I don't have that in here right now, but I've talked about it incessantly on my channel and it's not just a drugstore favorite product it's a favorite product in general you know I use the version for combination oily skin but they also have one for dry skin that's really good too and it just gives great medium medium full coverage but it doesn't look makeupy or heavy it just looks really nice for daytime or nighttime and it's just been a staple for me for a long time for a reason okay I think that's you know enough natural color on the face that's all I wanted just to not look super pale just moderately pale. So for blush, I'm using the NARS Air Matte in the shade Darling. And the next question is, what is your favorite splurge product? And for those of you seeing that white fuzzy thing right there, that's Luke's tail. I have a stool over here, but you still can't really see him very well. And he's crabby right now because he can't look out the window, which is over there because there's not enough room for his stool. I gotta figure things out in this room. It's just kind of crazy right now. So for my favorite splurge product, I am going to go with the Chanel Lip Duos. I love those things. And again, I have to show you a picture because I'm not at my makeup table. I don't have my usual setup going on and I'm not used to being in this room. I don't like liquid lipstick and I love these. They last all day. They last under a mask and don't transfer. They are one of the best things that I've ever spent my money on. I think I have four shades and I do intend to get more. That is how great they are. They don't dry your lips out. I do have an entire video on them and trying to find dupes for them and I never could. They're just so good. This is the best a light shifter finishing veil in Star Child. I just talked about this in my monthly favorites video. So if you missed that video, go catch that after you finish this. I love this as a finishing powder just to kind of softly diffuse everything and get rid of any harsh lines and give you that kind of airbrush look. I feel like my blush looks uneven, but it's just the lighting guys. It's just the lighting 
being a little weird. I've got sunlight over there and artificial light over here. Just gonna have to make do. The next question is, what is your most repurchased makeup product? I think I'm gonna have to say the Urban Decay 24-7 eyeliners, just because I have so many of them that I rotate through. I've bought them in so many shades. I just feel like they glide on beautifully and you have enough time to work with them, smudge them out if you want to before they set down. And they wear really well all day. I put on a little bit too much of that highlighter so I'm diffusing it with this finishing powder just to tone it down a little bit because I'm running errands and I don't need my highlighter to shine into outer space. So the next question is, what's your earliest makeup memory? This is the Laura Mercier lip liner in Hazelnut Tea. I've really been loving this shade. And I did blot off the plumping lip balm lip gloss that I had on just so it wouldn't be sticky underneath the lip liner. So my earliest memory would probably be my grandmother on my mother's side. I just have this recollection from when I was really young when we would travel to go visit her of going through her lipsticks. It just seemed like she was always very put together, you know, always had her hair done and always had a bright lip. That was just something that I did even when I got older was just going there and kind of messing around in her lipsticks and things. I can still remember the scent of all of her makeup and perfume and everything. And I just remember that. My mom was never really that into makeup, but my grandmother was really, really into just always being put together. And I just remember rooting through her stash and just seeing all the colors and all of that. I mean, this really brought me back. <laughs> I felt like my blush wasn't showing up on camera like it is in person as I'm looking in the mirror. So I topped over it with the NARS Claudette blush and I feel like it fixed it a little bit. I think there's something about this room where I'm gonna have to add a bunch of extra blush on my face. <laughs> so the next question is, what is your favorite place to shop for makeup? And I think I'm gonna have to go with Ulta for this one. I mean, I have a lot of favorite places to shop, but I do love the fact that I can get both drugstore as well as higher end makeup. And I don't really know if I have an online favorite because it's just so easy to order from anywhere online. So we'll just go with the in-person. What's the most underrated product that you own? Now, if you've been watching me for a while, you know what I'm going to say here. The Smashbox Kelly Contour Palette that is not limited edition like I thought it was going to be at first. They do have a light to medium and a medium to dark version now. I'm applying this shade Shag in the NARS Air Matte Lip Color, whatever the official name of this is. I have done videos where I have gotten an entire eye and face look out of this palette, even though technically it's just a face palette. By the way, I'm gonna be giving my thoughts on all these products if I haven't talked about them yet. If you're not subscribed, be sure and subscribe because I have definite thoughts on all of these products and more new releases. And if you are subscribed, just be sure that you check your subscriptions tab to see new videos from anyone you're subscribed to because YouTube is not giving notifications reliably these days. The next question is, what's the most overrated product that you own? And I'm gonna to have to go with NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. So I've talked about this in an unpopular opinion video. So many people love this and it just does nothing for my dry textured under eyes. It emphasizes any texture, any little lines, any dryness that I have. And I just think there are nicer, better, creamier concealers out there. It's basically the opposite of the name. It's not radiant or creamy for me. And I've held on to it for comparison purposes and for videos and stuff, but it's probably old. I should probably just get rid of it. I'm not ever going to use it again. I just, I just don't like it. What is a discontinued makeup item you wish would come back? I have two that came to mind immediately, and one of these is one that Allie mentioned, and that is the Makeup by Mario palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. That palette was fantastic. I really wish that they would bring it back and make it permanent. The shades were perfect. The textures were perfect. The looks you could get with it were amazing, and I feel like it just went off the market so quickly. I hated that that was a limited edition product so much. And I feel like they should just bring it back by popular demand because so many people loved it. My next one is the original formula of Estee Lauder Double Wear Light. That was my favorite light to medium coverage skin light foundation. It was fantastic. And for some reason they changed the formula and it just was nowhere near the same. I didn't like it. I just, no. And so that is a product that I really wish they hadn't messed with. I no longer use that particular foundation. Now the original I love, and I've talked about that numerous times on my channel, but this lighter everyday formula, it just is no good for my particular needs 
anymore. I get so tired of brands changing formulas. It's very rare that it's actually for the better. Where do you go for makeup inspiration? So I do look at a lot of makeup artists pages on Instagram. I look at other influencers on Instagram that do looks that can translate to the everyday, whether it be just a natural look or, you know, a smoky type of look. I just like seeing the different techniques and styles that people do. I also look at certain celebrities if I like their makeup vibe, you know, I'll follow them or I'll, you know, kind of keep up with them and see what they're doing. So I would say those are probably the two main sources of inspiration for me with makeup. So now we have, what do you hope to see less of in makeup's future? I have to agree with what Ali said in her video about product launches. There are so many product launches right now. It's so hard to keep up with. It's almost expected. And I think because some brands come out with products so frequently, other brands feel like they have to keep up with it. And doing what we do, it's overwhelming because we're constantly having to buy stuff or we're being sent things. And so we don't truly get to enjoy what we have before we're buying new things to review, for you so that you can decide what you want to spend your money on. I can't imagine how overwhelming it is for the average consumer if it's that overwhelming for us, but I would love to see just less makeup launches, less product launches, so that we can really just get excited about what's coming out again. It just always makes me wonder at how different these launches can continue to be. I mean, are we going to keep seeing the same things recycled over and over? How innovative can we keep becoming if things are just constantly being churned out? Now, as far as what I want to see more of, my brain immediately went to more brands being aware and doing more regarding diversity and inclusivity. Allie did touch on that as well, but I'm going to add a little bit more to that. But as far as that goes, I think some brands are doing that so well, but there's really no reason why every brand shouldn't be coming out with these extensive color ranges or a broader color range of products when they come out with new releases or expanding shade ranges with a current products. The bar is set high and they need to achieve what is expected. But I do think that we're headed in a good direction and I just want to see more. There are some bigger brands that have come out with some things and it's been disappointing still. And I just feel like we should be past that at this point. So I'm going to add to this. I am in the over 40 demographic and being in this demographic, you start to realize how underrepresented you are. And I would love to see more representation of the over 40, over 50, over 60. Well, I guess technically all of that is over 40 demographic. You know, this is not anything new. This has been going on for a long time. A brand will come out with a new product that's geared towards the over 40 demographic and they'll use a 25 year old or a 30 year old in their advertising campaign. And in the content creator, YouTuber, influencer space, those of us that are in this age group, we notice some things that, you know, brands include younger people in that we should be able to be included in. It happens and it's unfortunate there are some brands that just almost don't even give you the time of day if you're over a certain age. And it's really unfortunate because we're into makeup too. We have faces too, and we're not, you know, dead. So it can be really frustrating. And I would like to see more representation of the over 40 and up age group, just in all aspects of beauty and in makeup. I had a ton of products in my January favorites and fails, a lot of fails, actually. If you haven't seen that, I'll have it linked here for you. If you're not subscribed to my channel, be sure and hit that subscribe button and become part of the family. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you, Allie, for tagging me. It was so much fun to do, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!